So our first reading, anytime I see a letter of uh, St. Paul, one of the things that strikes me is how God has a way of changing hearts. God can change hearts like no other. And particularly, we're reminded of that with St. Paul, because who was one of the biggest persecutors of the early church? It was St. Paul. Yet when God literally had this moment of, of great power, Paul changed his, his heart. He was converted, and he became one of the greatest evangelists. In fact, one of the greatest writers in the New Testament, in which the majority of the New Testament is written by him. And so it's a reminder <clears throat> of that great reality that, that God can use those negative things, that negative zeal, and turn it into a positive way and really change hearts. Flipping into our gospel today, this is one of my absolute favorite gospels. Just, just, it's so exciting. So you've got Martha and Mary, okay? And I was thinking about this. If Martha and Mary were alive in 2020, what would Martha be stressed out about right now? I'm sure she'd be stressed out that we have an overactive hurricane season. I'm sure that she'd have been stressed out about the murder hornets. I mean, that was a big deal, right, Mary? Then I'm sure that we can't forget the COVID. There's plenty to be stressed out about right now. And if Martha and Mary were alive, they would be stressed out. Mary, Martha would be stressed out about these things. But what does Jesus say to Martha? Jesus says to Martha what he says to each and every one of us. He says our name and he says, we are anxious and worried about many things, but there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part. And so it's a reminder for us, what are those things that are worrying us? What are those things that make us anxious? You know, the Lord wants to give us peace. The Lord wants to give us peace in those areas of our lives where things might be absolutely crazy, where we might be worried about what's going on with our families, the finances at home, the uncertainty of job loss in the current economy, whatever it may be that is causing us to be anxious, that's causing us to be worried, that's causing us to be burdened, we follow the example of Mary and we do what? We sit before Jesus and we ask him to give us peace. And so brothers and sisters, as we come together as a family of believers this morning, as we prepare to kneel before the Lord God of hosts, our Lord Jesus Christ here in the Eucharist, as we prepare to receive him, we ask him, Lord, we too are anxious, we too are burdened, Never let us forget the great gift of the Eucharist in which we're going to receive later on in this Mass. We thank you, Father, for the great gift of sending your Son to die for each and every one of us. May we never take for granted that gift. May we remember that we are called to say yes to you each and every day. And that yes to you means bringing those things that burden us, those things that worry us, those things that might hold us down and making of them an offering to you. And so this morning, Lord, we do that. We lay all those things that burden us down here upon this altar as we prepare to receive and encounter you. 